and I had an encounter with my son, Freddie. He's, he's about to turn seven, but, but he made a mistake. And, and as he made this mistake, I, I saw the mistake. I caught the mistake. And so I, I, I asked Freddie, I said, Freddie, what, what's going on? What, what, what happened? And, and I could see his face and his countenance fall. He was so disappointed in himself. He, 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 he didn't remember in that moment, uh, you know, my love for him. He, he didn't remember that, that everybody makes mistakes. Instead, all he could focus in on and dwell upon was, was his failure, was his faults. And, and he was ashamed and he was overwhelmed with all those kinds of emotions. And so he, he ran away to try to escape it, forgetting all of those good things about him, how amazing he is, all the gifts that he has, how much his dad and his family love him. And this is what we're all prone to do when we have disappointments or, or failures or, or, or faults or walking through exile, loneliness, isolation, we tend to lose sight of, of who we are and, and whose we are. And Daniel was unwilling to do so, even though King Nebuchadnezzar was stripping everything away from, from who they were. He was trying to reprogram them. He was trying to strip them of, of who they were, everything they knew, their faith, their family, their, their friends, their, their love, their life. And Daniel said, enough is enough. And he demands uh, to eat what is kosher, to stay true to, to food that was undefiled and, and, and pure, food that wouldn't further separate him from the God who loves him. By asking this request, Daniel was taking his own life into his hands. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were doing the same thing right alongside of him. But instead, what was happening is they were placing their whole lives in God's hands. And so what happens next is that the royal officer grants them permission to eat what they want to eat. And for three years, they stay true to this uh, faithful discipline of eating and keeping kosher, refusing to be defiled any further before God. And this is what happens as the story continues. At the end of time that, that the king had set for them to be brought in, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar and, and the king spoke with them. And among them all, no one was found to compare with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were stationed in the king's courts. In every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which uh, the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all of the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel continued there until the first year of King Cyrus. I, I love this. When, when, when the king sees these four men after three years of, of maintaining this dis discipline, remembering who they are, refusing to forget or to let go or to be further separated uh, from the God who, who loves them, who they loved uh, as well. What happens is he sees them as 10 times better than the rest. No one was able to compare with them. And, and even though they had, had, had given, been given new names, uh, the king refers to them according to their birth names, which proves the moral of this story. This first point in, in, in Daniel Whenever you are facing tough stuff, it's important to remember who you are, no matter the cost. Don't lose sight of, of who you are or, or whose you are, but instead hold fast to that. Find a practice that will remind you and continue to, to keep before you this, this idea that, that you are good, that you are worthy of love because you are God's child. Don't forget that. And when we remember who we are, no matter the circumstance, what we're going to find is that, is that God's power will always overcome the ruling powers of the day. As God restored King Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's vision to see Daniel in this faithful foursome as better than the rest, so much so that they vault them in their social standing. This is what happens. If you're facing adversity, if you're walking through exile, if you're in the middle of the tough stuff right now, don't forget who you are. Daniel says, remember, look in the mirror, see yourself as, as good, worthy to be loved because you are God's. Stay faithful and you'll experience God's power.